Anytime we find out that somebody has landed a new job, one of the first questions that we ask them is how much does it pay? Yeah. <laughs> Don't act brand new. That's right. When your children came home after landing their first job, your first question was, yeah. how much does it pay? Because you was trying to figure out how much you was going to be able to collect on Friday <laughs> when they got that first check. When your boo came home, told you that they got a new job, your first question was, how much does it pay? Because you're tired of paying all the bills. You're trying to figure out how much help you're about to get. Whenever we find out that someone has landed a job, or even when we are offered a job, one of the first questions we want to know, you might not have asked it uh, in the prior interviews, but in that last interview, before you leave out, one question you are going to ask is, how much does it pay? Oh, you was being cute the first two interviews, but that third one, you ain't come to play. I need to know what this paycheck going to look like after these two Fridays. How much does it pay? But, but, but there's a question. There's a question that I don't think enough of us ask. And that question is, how are the benefits? Yeah. I'm only 37 years old. Praise God, I made it. Uh, but, but in a few jobs that I've had, I, I've gained a new appreciation for benefits. There are jobs that pay a whole lot of money, but unfortunately, they ain't got no benefits. And a job that pays a whole bunch of money that ain't really got no benefits, I've come to realize ain't really a job that's worth working. In fact, there are some jobs that have better benefits than they do pay. And the truth of the matter is some people take it because the benefits are so beneficial that they don't even care about the pay. I think we don't give that question enough of our attention and enough of our time. But somebody who does is King David. As we're reading this text, King David has a deep appreciation for how much God pays. Oh, but he ain't he not blessing the Lord for what God pays. He's blessing the Lord because of his benefits. Y'all read it in the text. He said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And he came to himself and said, wait a minute, what am I praising him for? Oh, yeah, don't forget all them benefits. And then he begins to list them. And truthfully, that's that's pretty much the synopsis of what's going on here. But I'll give you a brief overview. As this text starts, uh, David is declaring his praise. King David declares uh, his commitment to bless the Lord not just with his mouth, but with all that is with him. He, he, he says, I'm going to bless the Lord. And, and he starts talking to his soul. He says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And then he says, all that is within me. He says, listen, I'm not just going to bless the Lord with my mouth, but, but I'm going to bless the Lord with everything that's in me, including my life. Yeah. Yes. Ah, now, now, what's, what's, what's interesting here is uh, this word bless, I looked it up in Hebrew, uh, the word bless doesn't just mean praise, it means kneel. Uh -huh. ah, okay, we're going to try this again. The word bless doesn't just mean praise, but, but, but it means kneel. So in essence, when he's saying, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, he's not just talking about praising God, but he's talking about pleasing God. I can't yes. get no help in here. And, and, and I've come to the conclusion that uh, ovation for God means nothing without obedience to God. I said that too fast, but that's tweetable. Ova ovation to God means nothing without obedience to God. There are churches that are filled with people who come Sunday after Sunday and they clap their hands and they shout real loud, but then they leave out of here and live any kind of life they want. Yeah. There are folks that come in our churches and they dance all over the place, but when they leave out of here, they ain't dancing with Jesus, they dancing with the devil. I've come to the conclusion that your praise means nothing if it's not followed by obedience to God. Some of you come to the house of the Lord and say, yes, Lord, but then you go to your house and say, yes, me. Ovation means nothing if it's not followed by obedience and David knew that, which is why he chose that word. He says, God, I'm not just praising you with my mouth, but I'm praising you with my life. Is there anybody here today that comes to church on Sunday and have made a decision that, God, I'm not just going to praise you with my hands. I'm not just going to praise you with my mouth. I'm not even just going to praise you with my feet, but I'm going to praise you with the life that I live. That the conversations that I have on Monday will also reflect the praise I gave you on Sunday. That the thoughts that I entertain will even be a form 
form of worship to you that the things that I desire throughout the week will even be, who am I talking to today? That even my desires will worship the Lord. I don't know about you, but God has been so good to me that there is no part of my life that I will not use to give his name praise. David declares his praise, but after he declares his praise, he directs his praise. Uh, King David is praising because he refuses to forget the benefits of serving God. He says, listen, after I make my declaration that I'm going to bless the Lord, oh, my soul, I, I, I got to give some purpose behind it. Why am I blessing the Lord? And he says, oh, that's why when I think back over my life and see where the Lord has brought me from, I, I got to give God praise. He's been too good to me, which brings me to another thought. Good me. Music will not compensate for bad memory. Wow. Okay, let me let me let me try that again. A uh, uh, good music will not compensate for bad memory. Can I argue that 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 the reason most folks struggle to get into praise and worship has nothing to do with the music? That you can have the most gifted musician this side of heaven, but if you got bad memory, good music don't really mean nothing. And this is why I really don't care when I come in here on Sunday whether somebody's on these keys or not. I really don't care if I come in here on Sunday and somebody beating these drums or not because I don't need good music. I got a pretty good memory and when I look back over my life and I think things over, when I see how far the Lord has brought me, uh, my soul cries out hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Is there anybody here today that can declare I ain't got amnesia. My God's been mighty good to me and listen, if you're like me, you ain't got to thank far. See, there's some folks that got to look back years. There's some folks that got to look back months. There's some folks that got to look back weeks. But baby, I can look back at just this morning. I took a two and a half hour drive from Woodbridge and a drunk driver didn't hit me. I took a two and a half hour drive this morning and a distracted driver didn't run us off the road. I took a two and a half hour drive this morning and no deer came across the way to wreck the car. I'm so glad that God kept me, that there was no mechanical malfunction with the car. Ah, in the name of Jesus, that we didn't break down on the side of the road. My God's been good to me. And if that wasn't enough, some of you may not have had a long commute, but the short commute from your house to God's house, he kept you. My God, and if that ain't enough, you had a nice warm house to sleep in last night. My God's been good. You woke up to running water. My God's been good. You woke up to electricity. My God's been good. You had a whole closet full of clothes. My God's been good. I'm so glad that I don't need good music because I got a good memory. And David says, listen, I, I, I'm praising my God so much because 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 I got a good memory. And the truth of the matter is the fact that you can remember is reason to give God praise. With Alzheimer's being at an all time high, with dementia being at an all time high, God, I thank you for keeping my mind because you say you'll keep them in perfect peace if my mind is stayed on you. I'm so glad that I got good memory. He says, uh, I'm going to declare my praise. I'm going to direct my praise. But then David details the reasons for his praise. He says, listen, I'm praising God today because the Lord forgives. Yes. Oh Did any of y'all get any sleep last night? I, I, I'm going to say that again. Uh, he says, I'm praising God because he forgives. Yes. Okay, y'all been saved too long. Y'all been saved so long that y'all forgot what he forgave you from. Because, listen, baby, I know you look real good this morning, but if we just went back through your life 20 years ago, listen, if we went back through your life 10 years ago, let, let's not even trip. If we went back through your life five years ago, and listen, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and step on somebody's feet. If we went back through your life five days ago, you know what the Lord forgave you from. And David also knew what the Lord forgave him for. And he said, listen, I'm blessing the Lord with my soul, my body, my mind, and everything. Ooh, because I remember what he forgave me from. Okay, you can't praise him because you ain't even forgave yourself. But I'm so glad that I serve a God who will forgive me even if I choose not to forgive me. And that's why I give him praise. But he says not that he just forgives, uh, uh, but, but the Lord heals. Yes. Oh my God. Okay, y'all be 
healthy too long, y'all. Y'all been healthy way too long. Uh, David, now, I, I've never read in the text where David battled cancer. I've never read, I've never read in the text where David even had a common cold. David was a pretty healthy person. And, and that's, that's amazing to me because David says, I'm blessing the Lord, uh, because he's a healer, but I don't see where he knew God as a healer, which tells me that David knew some folks who needed healing. And I don't know about you, but I'm just of the mindset that even if he didn't heal me, the fact that he healed my mama from cancer is enough for me to give a break. I'm so glad that my God is a healer. I never had to battle diabetes, but I've seen him deliver a family member from it. I've never had to go through dementia or Alzheimer's, but I know he kept it off me. And I'm of the mindset that I'll praise him because he's a healer, even if he ain't got to heal me. Yes. He says, the Lord forgives. The Lord heals. Ooh, but here's, here's the one right here. He says, the Lord redeems. Yes. Okay, I, I was hoping at least one of these would get you. He says the Lord redeemed. He's a redeemer. And, and, and I believe the psalmist said it this way. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say something. He says he's a redeemer. Okay, you don't know what redeem means. To redeem means to buy something back. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's literally the equivalent of you being a prisoner of war and the Lord paying a ransom for your freedom. And listen, I ain't Baptist, but the Baptist would say uh, it was a good Friday over two. 2,000 years ago, they hung him on an old rugged cross. They pierced his side, crown of thorns on his head. He looked up, said, it is finished, hung his head, and the blood of Jesus paid my ransom so that I would not have to spend my uh, my next life in a burning hell. I'm so glad that when the enemy had me as a prisoner of war, that God was willing to pay. Okay, y'all don't know how this thing goes, but there's a whole lot of folks even today, that are prisoners of war, and they're still prisoners of war because their country won't pay a ransom for them. I'm so glad that if the United States of America won't pay a ransom to set me free, that Jesus was willing to pay it on Calvary, that he was willing to shed his blood. To buy. The truth of the matter is, I wouldn't pay myself out of bondage, but I'm so glad that God loved me so much that he was willing to pay for my freedom. Yes, thank you, Lord. He said, I'm praising him because he forgives, because he heals, and he redeems. And listen, that ain't even my sermon. That's just an overview of what's going on in the text. Uh, I want to share with you today three benefits of those who serve the Lord. I hope you came to take some notes, write a little something down, or just to throw your shoe across the room, whatever you came to do. Three benefits, three benefits of those who serve the Lord. Nudge your neighbor real quick. Wake him up. Say, neighbor, neighbor. we about to check out these benefits. All right. Can I share the first benefit of serving the Lord? Y'all ready? Now, now, really, there's about five of them that's listed here, but I ain't want to keep y'all in church all day. Plus, I got play rehearsal when I leave here. Your pastor going to be in a prayer. Uh, in a play next month. Uh, uh, amen. Amen. I'm coming for Hollywood. Uh, uh, so I, I can't get all five today, but maybe I'll tackle them next week. But I'm going to give you three. The first benefit for those who serve the Lord is that the Lord provides good mediation. Yeah. <sighs> I got to stop using these big words because clearly y'all don't know what they mean. Uh, somebody say the Lord. The Lord. Provides. Provides. Good mediation. Good mediation. Okay, you can't get excited about that because you don't know what I mean. Well, listen, we're going to find it in verses 1 through 3. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Somebody say forget not. Forget not. All his benefits. Uh, who forgives. Who forgiveth. I'm sorry, King James. Who forgiveth. All thine iniquities. Okay, King David says he forgives. Now, y'all know I like to get into the etymology of a word. I like to break it down and, and see where it came from. He says the Lord forgives. Somebody say he forgave me. Amen. And really, that was a place to shout, but y'all be missing y'all cues. Nevertheless, uh, that word forgive that David uses here in the Hebrew is the word salak. Somebody say salak. salak. Okay, you just learned some Hebrew. This word salak means to pardon or to spare. So when he says uh, he forgives all thine iniquities, what he's really saying is that he pardons all our iniquities or he spares all our iniquities. But it gets good, Mother Dawson. He then goes on to say that he forgives all 
our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He spares us from all of our iniquities. And that word all is just messing me up. Uh, uh, Because there, there, there are folks who won't forgive you of all your iniquities. They'll forgive you of certain iniquities, uh, but they won't forgive you of all your... We all know that one family member that every family reunion likes to remind you of how you did them wrong back in 1986. Folks just won't let it go, but but God forgives us of all our iniquities. Now, iniquities don't quite hit the way it need to hit because it's a big SAT word, but but that word iniquity uh, in the Hebrew is the word avon. Now, I thought it was Avon for a second. I was about to say, come through Avon, even in the Bible. But but, but it's Avon, and it means fault or guilt. Uh, fault or guilt. So he says, uh, I pardon you of all your faults or your guilt. I, I, I spare you of all your faults or your guilt. Now, this is a guilt that's associated with punishment. And I looked up that word pardon because pardon is actually a legal term. Uh, some of you, if you got a little something on your record, you know about it. But 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 a pardon can actually come from a judge. A pardon can come from a governor. A pardon can come from a president. And, and the whole purpose of a pardon this is about to make somebody shout. The purpose of a pardon is to spare you or to remove punishment for something you were guilty of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, listen, I, I I know you got to act like you've been saved your whole life because you don't want nobody to know your business. But 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 this is why I'm shouting this morning because I ain't always been Pastor Mike. In fact, I ain't always been Preacher Mike. In fact, I ain't always been saved Mike. In fact, I ain't always been church going Mike. There, there is a Mike that y'all don't know about and will never know about. And the truth of the matter is, if I can be all the way honest. That Mike was guilty of sin, but thanks be unto God that he said, I know you're guilty, but I'm going to pardon you even though it's your fault. Yes. Yes. Ooh, I'm in the wrong church this morning. Yes. He, 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 he gives good mediation. Now, mediation, again, is a legal term. To, to mediate is to essentially have someone who's fighting for you, someone that is, 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 is attempting to prove that you are justified in what you're doing. And, and as I began to read this, I was reminded of a scripture that says Jesus is now at the right hand of the Father. My God, making intercession for us. Oh, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, it, the, the way it's painted, it doesn't say where Jesus is taking a break. It says that he's at the right hand of the Father. Don't miss this. Making intercession. There's a teacher in the room. The teacher knows a little something about tense. There's past tense. There's present tense. And there's future tense. Ah, uh, okay. If he uh, made intercession... That's past tense. Uh, uh, If he's going to make intercession, that's future tense. But the text says that he's making intercession for us, which is present tense. And that blows my mind because that means he's always in the present, which means, don't miss this, while I'm messing up, he's making intercession. He ain't just intercede for what I did, but baby, he interceded for what I'm doing and what I ain't even thought to do yet. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I got a lawyer that works 24-7 for me. Oh, that he takes no days off because the devil don't take no days off. And I'm so glad that he's willing to make intercession for me even when it's my fault. And I know you can't admit it on today that all your sin was committed on behalf of somebody else. But I know me. There were some sins that I committed that maybe I wanted to commit them. There were some things that I did that I willingly walked into. But thanks be unto God that he said, even though it was your fault, I'm going to save you from you. Because the truth of the matter is, the devil ain't some of our biggest enemy. The biggest enemy for some of us is the inner me. And I'm so glad that the text says that he's willing to save me from me. Me. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. See if I can make this plain. Um, so, uh, for the first time in a very long time, I, I had to change my benefits up at work. I ain't had to change benefits for a while. And and what happens is when you don't have to change your benefits, you kind of get comfortable with with whatever you're getting. And and me having to change my benefits, uh, I, I actually decided I was going to look through and see the benefits that we have. And 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 to my surprise, there were benefits that I didn't even realize we had access to. And one of those benefits uh, uh, is legal insurance. Mm-hmm. My God, 
all these years, now don't get me wrong, I, I don't get in trouble, so I don't need legal insurance, but, but it, it piqued my interest, and so I started to read up on this legal insurance, and what I discovered is it provides 24-7 access to legal services. I just have to pay a small price every paycheck. I mean, it's pennies, pretty much, and, and I can have access to a world-class lawyer who will give me counsel, who will actually show up for me 24, somebody say 24-7, 24-7 access to a lawyer, all I got to do is pay a couple bucks here and there and I can call them anytime. That blew my mind that I could have somebody, a lawyer, who would fight my battles for me anytime I want. But then that got me to thinking. As good as that is, that still costs me something. As, as, as good as that is, uh, they can only do so much if I'm guilty. And this made me give God praise for Jesus because the Bible says he's a very present help in time of trouble. Now, 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 that ain't the part I, I started to shout over. I, I, I was excited that I had access to a lawyer. Uh, but, but then I began thinking about my life. And the truth of the matter is, my life had some ratchet seasons in it. Uh, my life had some things that I am not particularly proud of. And listen, you can sit there looking at me judging all you want. But the truth of the matter is, if the Lord was to put a big screen, oh, in fact, there is one. If the Lord was to allow your, your life to flash across this big screen, you would wouldn't be looking at me so strange, but nevertheless, don't nobody know, so it don't hurt. Uh, 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 but, but, but I began to think, I don't just need a lawyer. I, I need a lawyer, a judge, and a jury. Yes. And it made me think about my God. Yes. That Jesus yes. is my lawyer. Yes. That God is a righteous judge. Yes. And Holy Spirit is all the witness I need. He's a good yeah. jury. Yeah. And this is why I give God praise for his good mediation. Yes. Because every time I find myself in trouble, the case gets dismissed. Yeah. And the case gets dismissed yeah. because he's judge, jury, and lawyer. And listen, my legal services at work are good, but it ain't that good because I can have a good lawyer and have a bad judge. I can have a good lawyer and have a bad jury, but when you're on team Jesus, you always got a good judge, you always got a good lawyer, you always got a good jury. I'm so glad, and I give God praise for the benefits because there's no no court case I'll walk into that I won't walk out of. Amen. They just said I'm I know my life is pretty jacked up, but God gives good mediation. Yes. And some of you are here today, you know if it had not been for the Lord on your side. Yes. Listen, I won't say you don't know where you would be, because the truth of the matter is, most of us know where we would be. Most of us would be dead. Most of us would be in jail. Most of us might be in an insane asylum. Some of us might still be in a hospital. But I'm so glad that he got good mediation, that there's somebody fighting for me, baby, when I can't fight for myself. And this is the benefit of being a believer. Not, not, not only that, not only that, um, the Lord gives good mediation, uh, but I also discovered that the Lord provides good medical coverage. Yes. Oh, OK, OK. I, I, I know we live in a time where medical coverage is a terrible thing. I just got a bill for four thousand uh, dollars from, from the emergency room. Now, now, don't judge me. Uh, Christmas Eve, I passed out. Some of y'all know the story. I preached heaven down that morning and, and, and was at a best friend's house. Passed out at the house. They called 911. Ambulance came to get me. All they did was pump me full of water. That was it. I was dehydrated. Four thousand dollars for some water. I don't even know what kind of water it was. It won't feed you. But nevertheless, nevertheless, medical coverage is crazy. But there's good news. David says God has good medical coverage. Now, I know you think I'm making it up, but it's right here in the text. Verse three, he says, who heals? Don't miss this. All thy diseases. Yes. Ah, Y'all been healthy way too long. Yes. Help your neighbor say neighbor. neighbor. Not some. Not some. Not a few. Not a few. Not a couple. Not a couple. But all. But all. He says who heals all your Diseases. Uh, okay, now this this word heal, this word heal, it, it messed with me a little bit. It messed with me a little bit. I got to be honest. 
because I, I had a very one dimensional mindset as it related to what healing was. But but if you look up this word heal in the Hebrew, it's a word some of y'all might know. If you're a deep saint, you know this word. It's the word Rapha. Yes. Ah, yes. My God. Yes. He's the Lord thy God who healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha. It's the word Rapha. David says he Rapha's all my disease. Now this word Rapha means to cure. So he said he's the God that cures. All, okay, you can't celebrate because you ain't seen a miracle in a long time. But 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 I've seen my God cure some folks. I, and, and to cure a thing means to restore it to wholeness. To cure a thing means you return it to the original or better condition. I'm so glad that over 2,000 years later, my God is still Jehovah Rapha. That he is still the, the Lord thy God that healeth thee and healeth me. Because he says he heals all. Somebody say all. all. Which means there's not a disease yet yet that has come up against Jehovah Rapha that he could not cure. Ah, uh, he cures cancer. He cures diabetes. He cures dementia. He cures the common cold. He cures the flu. He cures COVID-19. There's not a disease that has come up against him yet that he cannot cure, but it ain't just cure, it's repair. <laughs> oh my God, that Hebrew word also means to repair. He says he repairs everything that breaks you down. That there is nothing that is coming to your life that has tried to shatter your life that he has not been able to put back together. I give God praise for Jehovah Rapha, but it's not just cure. It's not just repair. But but if you go a little deeper in Strong's Concordance, uh, there's a literal translation. And the literal translation means to mend as if by stitching. I love the Hebrew language. He says, uh, the Lord literally mends. He stitches me together. And, and he began to give me a revelation on healing and why we don't praise God like we ought to praise God for healing. See, we're stuck on the first two. That, that in order for God to heal, he has to cure and or repair. But he says, I'm not just the God that cures. I'm not just the God that repairs. But I'm also the God that mends. I'm, I'm the God that stitches Together and, and, and the light bulb finally went off. I began to think about our dear sister Adrian, who went on to be with the Lord last year. And, and it still hurts my heart. But but there's something amazing about Sister Adrian that made this plain to me that if you looked at Sister Adrian, you ain't know she was fighting cancer. No, that's right. That if you looked at Sister Adrian, you wouldn't know she just came off of chemo. That if you looked at Sister Adrian, you wouldn't know that she was in stage four. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, even though she still uh, went on to be with me. During the time she had the cancer, I was the God that mended. Yeah. I kept her together. Even though cancer tried to tear her apart, I kept her together and I have a new revelation on healing and I am ready to give God praise for folks who don't look like what they going through. Yeah. See, my God is Jehovah Rapha and not only will he deliver me out of the fire, he will develop me in the fire. Yeah. Some of us can testify that it was when we were going through our trials, we thought we were going to fall apart. We thought we were going to die in it, but my God is a healer. He is a mender, which means even when my life began to tear at the seams, got the Holy Spirit came in and began stitching me back together. I was on the edge of insanity, but Holy Spirit came in and stitched me together. I was ready to throw in the towel, but he came in and stitched me together. And if you look at me today, I don't look like what I've been through. And really, you ought to shout, if not for me, but for yourself. Because if I pass the mic around and let some of y'all testify about the things God has healed you from, my God, you don't look like what you've been through. And it's because my God is a mender. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. But here's the thing. He heals all of our diseases. I had to look up that word disease uh, uh, in the in the Hebrew, and it it's the word takalu. The word takalu. Now, of course, it means sickness. That's that's primarily what we're talking about. He heals us of all of our sickness. So 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 whatever disease is in my body that is caused by a condition, God can heal me of that disease. That that medical condition. That thing that has my body responding abnormally when it should be responding normally. And I I guess y'all ain't never been sick before, or or you thought that the medicine did it, or or you thought the doctor did it, or you thought the surgeon 
surgery did it, but, but, but I'm of the mindset that the doctors on this planet can only dress the wound, but only my God in heaven can heal the wound. See, you don't know about biology, but the truth of the matter is God has so created the body in a way that it actually has healing properties on its own, that whenever something foreign gets into the body, we begin producing something called antibodies to fight the thing that's foreign in the body. Uh, I thank God for doctors who dress my wound, but only God can heal the wound, and only God can heal me of the diseases that hit my body, but it ain't just disease, though. It ain't just disease. As I continue to read in Hebrew, it's not, it's not just sickness, but it's grief. Woo, my God. Mm. Oh, yeah. Ah, my God. Ah. Mm. I ain't preaching no more. I'm going to give TED Talks. Um, <laughs> he's the God who doesn't just heal all my diseases as far as sickness, but he's the God that heals my grief. In other words, yeah. he's not just the God that heals what you can see. He's the God that heals the hurt you can't see. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I can see this congregation with x-ray vision and I ain't Superman, but some of you got some hurt that folks can't see. Yes. Oh, you shout real good on Sunday, but there's some hurt that we can't see. Oh, you praise the Lord real good, but there's still some hurt that we can't see. And I'm so glad he's Jehovah Rapha. He's yes. not just the God that can heal the hurt that you can see. Oh, but he's the God that can heal the invisible hurt. Yes. He's the God who shows up for that person that's suffering in silence. He's the God who shows up for that person who's wrestling with mental illness. He's the God who shows up for that person who's having suicidal ideation. I'm so glad that we serve a God who not only tends to my visible hurts, but my invisible hurts. Yes. He says he's the God who heals you of not just all sickness, but all grief. Okay. Um, now again, I'm, I'm reviewing my benefits because I ain't had to do it in a while. Um, and I'm reviewing my benefits and I discovered and I shared this with some of you all uh, uh, that not only do we have medical coverage, not only do we have medical coverage that, that covers any medical situations I may have with my body, but we also have mental mental coverage. Uh, we have our EAP program where they actually offer uh, eight free counseling sessions. If you're going through a life change or something traumatic, you can call them 24-7 uh, and if you need them in an emergency, you can call them 24-7 or you can schedule those appointments with somebody in office. That was interesting to me. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. I can literally call them anytime and they'll be able to speak to whatever is going on in my life. And, and, and that's cool. That's, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Because that, that just means that I can connect with the counselor. Mm -hmm. I, I can connect with the counselor. But, but I'm a saint that reads my Bible, too. And, 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 and it's good to connect with a counselor. But, but here's the problem. I remember the conversation uh, between Jesus and his disciples. Can I tell you how the conversation went? Uh, he said, uh, I'm about to get up out of here. And the disciples got all sad about it. But he said, listen, don't trip, because if I don't leave, then the comforter can't come. And so he said, it's actually better that I go, because right now I'm walking with you. But when the comforter comes, he's going to walk in you. And that word that we translate comforter can also be translated counselor. I thank God for EAP. Oh, but I thank God for uh, uh, the Holy Spirit because he's not just a counselor I can call. He's a counselor that I carry. See, it's one thing when I, I, I can call a counselor and I can formulate my words, but have you ever been hit by life so hard that you did not have the words to say, oh, well, you got you in good news, you in good company because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us yeah. when we don't know what to pray with utterings and groanings that we can't yeah. discern, which means when I can't pick up my phone and formulate words to a counselor to tell them what I'm going through, there's a counselor on the inside of me. Yeah. Baby, EAP is good, but I give God praise for G-O-D because the Holy Spirit in me, when I ain't got the words to say, when I can't wrap my mind around what's going on, when life hits me so hard that I can't even cry the Holy Spirit begins counseling me and not just counseling me, but comforting me through the most uncomfortable moments of my life. Yeah. I've come to the conclusion that doctors are practicing medicine. 
True. But I've never read where God is practicing. Amen. In fact, I read in the text that my God does not practice. He perfects. Yes. He doesn't say I'll practice those things concerning you. He says I'll perfect those things yes. which concern you. And the benefit that we have as believers is that we are not dealing with a God who's practicing, but we are dealing with a God who's been perfecting since the beginning of time. Yes. David said, the reason I'm praising God for these benefits is because he gives us good mediation. Uh, also, the Lord provides good medical coverage. And, and last but not least, the Lord puts his money on you. Ah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. The Lord puts his money on you. OK, I'm, I'm sorry. That's a gambling term. That's why y'all couldn't really get excited. Uh, uh, but help your neighbor real quick. Say neighbor. neighbor. God put his money on you. God put his money on you. Listen, I'm not making it up. It's right here in the text. It says in verse four, he redeems thy life from destruction. He redeems thy life. Redeemeth. Let me go. King James. He redeemeth thy life from destruction. David says that he redeems. Now, again, I told you this word redeem is actually, uh, it means to purchase, to buy back. And it's the Hebrew word geol, uh, to purchase or to buy back. But it's, it's what he's buying back that blows my mind. Uh, he says he redeems us from destruction. And it's the Hebrew word shakath, which means the grave or the pit. Amen. He brought me back from the grave or the pit. Now, we're, we're used to, to the first one, the grave, and really that's, that's really what we shout about on Sunday, uh, and this is why the Apostle Paul said it is better to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord because Jesus has purchased our redemption. He purchased uh, us from our sin debt so that we can eternally be connected to the Father, and really that's shoutable all by itself. He redeemed me from the grave. Uh, in other words, this is a form of life insurance. God gives good life insurance. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, what I like about God's life insurance is a little different from our life insurance. See, life insurance down here pays for your funeral. Mm -hmm. But God's life insurance paid for your future. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and this <laughs> is why I give God praise. Because yes. I don't care what you do with this body once I'm Amen. gone. Yes. Jesus said, don't be scared of the person that can kill the body, yes. but can't do nothing with the soul. Yes. I serve a God who said, forget the funeral. Yes. I'm putting my money on your future. Yes. And the truth of the matter is, my future did not always look bright. In yes. fact, my future looked terrible sometimes. Yes. But thanks be to God who says, while we were yet his enemies, yes. he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And the yes. truth of the matter is, most of us wouldn't die for our best friend. But yes. Jesus loved us so much that while we was in our ratchetness, that's that's pre-righteousness, while we was in our ratchetness, he still said, I'm going to put my money on you. And the yes. truth of the matter is, some of you wouldn't even bet on yourself, but I'm so glad God ain't a gambling man. But when he decided to gamble, that he was willing to gamble on me. Yes. God put his money on us, not to cover our funeral, but to cover our future. Now, most of us don't really think about that because we plan on living for a long time, even though the Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die, which means it's an appointment that you really don't know when you have, but it's coming and you can't miss it. But nevertheless, we, we really don't think about it too often, but, but it's that latter part that I think is really going to tickle your fancy, the pit. He paid for us from the pit. Now, the idea of a pit is that it's a trap. Yes. OK, so so he says the benefit that I'm praising God for is not that he bought me back from the grave, but he bought my way out of the pit. He, he bought my way out of the trap the enemy set for me. Yeah. OK, I, I, I should have been stuck in something. But when I fell in it, God said, already paid for that and he had to let me out oh okay you, you've never had a situation in life where you knew you shouldn't have got out of it yeah. and even right now you don't know how you got out of it can i tell you how you got out of it? god put his money on you see i'm gonna tell you how it played out you fell in that situation because you was you know people be people and, and you was people in that day you fell in the situation and you shouldn't have got out of the situation and right as the devil was about to get you jesus stepped in and said mm -mm, i paid for that oh you should have never made 
made it out of that relationship yeah. and you would still be in that relationship right now. Oh, but when the relationship was about to go to the too much stage, God yeah. stepped in and said, I already paid for that. Yeah. Oh my God, that church hurt really should have took you out and yeah. you should have never stepped into another church again. Yeah. Oh, but right when you was about ready to throw church away, Jesus stepped in because the devil was whispering in your ear and he said, shut up devil, I already paid yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's not just from the grave, but it's from the pit. I discovered that not only do we offer life insurance at work, we offer something called personal accident insurance. Mm -hmm. Personal accident insurance. Personal accident insurance is interesting. It's, 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 it's a supplemental insurance, which means it's an insurance that you have alongside your medical insurance. And here's the thing. It covers accidents that normally wouldn't be covered under your medical. So, so if you find yourself in a situation where you got hurt on accident and for whatever reason your medical coverage won't cover it, I won't cover it. You have this personal, uh, uh, personal injury insurance or personal accident insurance that will actually cover those. And that blessed me because it made me think about the God that I serve. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says, don't miss this. There's no temptation except that which is common unto man. Uh, but God is faithful that in every temptation he has made a way of escape. Now, I, 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 that sounds real cute, but, but the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation. He said, not only have I made a way, I paid the way. Uh -huh. yeah. That no matter how many accidents you have in life, I've already made a way and I've already paid the way, yeah. which means, watch this. He guarantees that I'm coming out of it. Don't miss this. But he's also paid so that I don't have to carry anything from it. Yeah. And this is why some of us don't look like what we've been through, because yeah. he made a way out for us. But then he paid a way that we didn't have to carry the guilt of that thing. Baby, I need you to tell your haters to take their mouth up off you because they keep trying to make you pay for something that Jesus has already paid for. And I need you to let them know God made a way for me to get out and he paid a way that I didn't have to stay there. So yeah. you can stay there if you want to. You can cry about it if you want to. I Listen, I'm sorry. I repent. But baby, I'm moving on because Jesus paid for me to have an innocent conscience regarding it. Yeah. Yes. He says, no matter what accident you find yourself in, not only have I made a way, but I've paid a way. Yeah. And this is why David says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Yeah. Ah, he forgives us of all of our sins. Yeah. He He. He. He forgives us of all, not just sin, I'm sorry, of our iniquities. Mm -hmm. He forgives us of all of our, ooh, I, I don't think that word is hitting. He forgives us of all of our iniquities. And some yeah. of us can look back over our life today and we remember the iniquity that we were in. Mm -hmm. We remember the situations and situationships yeah. mm -hmm. that we should have never made it out of. Yeah. And some of us are still beating ourselves up today about it. But I want to clear your conscience today and say, baby, leave that where it was. Yes. Yes. Because to forgive is to release the debt associated to it. That's good. Stop making yourself pay for what he's already paid for. Yes. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. And there may be someone here today you are struggling to trust that God can heal that thing that you're struggling with. And you might be here today and you may not have a physical ailment in your body. But the good news is, even if you're not struggling with something mentally or excuse me, physically, we serve a God who can heal those things you're struggling with mentally. He can heal those, those things you're struggling with emotionally. And my God, the seasoned saints say, this way. He's a balm in Gilead. Yeah. He can even fix what you're dealing with spiritually. And th this is why we call him the great physician. There is not a condition he's come across, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, that he cannot heal us from. Somebody say he's Rapha. He's Rapha. He's Rapha. And he redeems me or redeems my life, excuse me, from destruction. And now it makes sense. It comes full circle. He says, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, that word soul in the Hebrew, one of the definitions of that word soul is life. Mm -hmm. 
So when he gets to the end, it makes sense. He says, my life has to bless him because he paid for my life from destruction. And this is why it's never enough to come praise God with just your mouth. Yes. It's never enough to just lift up holy hands. It's never yes. enough to just give God a dance. He says, I need you to worship me with your life. Yes. Because watch this. Your life no longer belongs to you. I paid for it. Yes. 